So greetings, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to continuing this live webcast today. Uh, I wanted to go briefly through uh, say a few words about this live webcast, um, particularly those who are you listening first time, uh, as uh, we many of people already know, and the, some some of you don't know that this live webcast is. Uh, um, it's monthly and uh, every second Saturday around at this time and uh, this title of this is as uh, living with joy and dying in peace uh, this is the part four of the cycle um, the title for this today's uh, talk and practice is uh, sleep and death as a doorway to wisdom uh, so I will uh, speak a little bit more about it uh, later and uh, so um, so as you can see in the slide living with joy dying in peace is a free six-month internet course um, so this is all um, free uh, for people and uh, I always uh, ask people that if it's, this is very meaningful for you it helpful for you then please let other people know who you think they will be very interested who might who you think that it might help them uh, but we definitely don't want it, uh, to tell anybody who want who have uh, um, issues with their <laughs> resistance to it we don't want trying to convince anybody but if there is anybody who will benefit we always ask people to help to use your social media to let other people know um, there is a discussion forum, uh, and uh, those who will not able to watch this one and or not able to watch previous one, these all are recorded and they are on our um, Ligmature Learning. Uh, so the Ligmature Learning dot com, and also a website called Ocean of Wisdom. Uh, we are trying to upload in those those areas. There's a downloadable th uh, MP3 audio recordings, and uh, there are some also printing materials. So, um, as you can see, December 10th, uh, 2016. So today, this is a sleep and death as a doorway to wisdom. The next one will be January 14th, 2017 finding peace with death so uh, that will be our almost a, s a second it's not the last one but one before the last one then the last one will be february 11 2017 so so these are all um, ongoing uh, programs that, that i hope that uh, you know many of you will be able to attend continuously so so before we start today i wanted to um, I started with the Guru Yoga one time and uh, also I a spontaneous early today I decided to uh, do this live webcast also on the Facebook so this is a uh, uh, supposed to be live on the Facebook too uh, in Tenzin Wangja Rinpoche Facebook yes it, it's on yeah so so I will just kind of trying to experiment how this works also. Um, so just sit comfortably and uh, as in the sc uh, screen, uh, we can all sing together Guru Yoga one time. <clears throat> Oh. 
Okay, so, so the today's topic uh, as sleep and death as a doorway to the wisdom. So maybe just to uh, speak a little bit about um, what is a wisdom. And as in the Guru Yoga a prayer we just did, we, we are saying um, recognizing one's own true nature as a Buddha. So uh, every sentient being, every human being, all of us, our true nature is a Buddha, and our true nature is call, can be called in many, many different names. So, uh, so what is this also means in, when we're talking here, wisdom, the doorway to the wisdom is our true nature, it's also our wisdom. Um, so the, when we say wisdom, wisdom is the, the understanding or the one who understands the awareness. The awareness which understands our essence. Awareness which understands our true nature. Uh, awareness which understands that wisdom within us. And when that awareness take places in us, that then we have wisdom. Basically, that's what wisdom is referring to. So wisdom is a, a state of consciousness, a state of awareness, um, very higher state of awareness, a very higher and very subtle state of consciousness, which is, which knows the truth, which knows uh, oneself. So that is what is referring to wisdom. So, so the idea of the sleep and death being the doorway to that wisdom is, I think, is a very, very important one because um, in in our life uh, we sleep every day. Um, uh, probably, um, you know, one third of our lifetime as we sleep. So maybe we sleep twenty years. Maybe we sleep twenty-five years. Maybe people who live a little bit longer life, 90 years old, then you sleep 30 years. So Im just imagining t sleeping 25 years or sleeping 30 years and that actual sleep, moment of sleep, having some access to our awakening, our wisdom, uh, is, is something, it's really like amazing, you know, to think about that so that there is this, really like a, a possibility uh, to not only uh, it's not only to talk about intellectually or talk about theoretical possibility but actually experientially it's possible so so this of course that that experience of wisdom that experience of also in these teachings also refer as a clear light uh, a clear light, we say, we sell. So clear light, uh, in a way, clear is referring to more like emptiness in space. Light is referring to one which illuminates, one which understands, one which is conscious or one which is aware of it. So that wisdom of that space, the uh, awareness of that space, that is what really it's, it's referring to. And that awareness occurs many times in our life and in this very moment as i am speaking this very moment as you're listening uh, you do have that awareness so you uh, it's there uh, but not necessarily that we are 
conscious of that, not necessarily that we are aware of that. It's there. And uh, what makes more possible those people who are more grounded in their body and being be more still, and those people who are grounded in their speech and more silence, those people who are more connected with their heart and their mind, they are more open, they are more spacious, but they are not um, victimized or they are not conditioned too much by their uh, weakness, fears, and their egos, but able to remain more in that space, more chance that they have access or more chance they are uh, fully aware at this very moment, uh, their actions or the speaking or even in, in, uh, thoughts will not interfere the experiences of that wisdom. So that is possible. Um, the many moments it's possible to have that access to it, but we are not, of course, going to uh, talk about all those possibility and all those moments. We are talking very, very specifically, two very specific moments. Uh, is one is that sleep and one is the uh, dying process. So, so sleep, for example, um, in ancient tradition, in Tibetan tradition, and in our Indian tradition here in the Buddhist tradition, uh, and uh, many uh, higher tantric uh, cycle of teachings, and also many uh, the tradition of great perfection, the Dzogchen tradition, and in these tradition, uh, the dream and sleep has been one of the very important. Uh, path and practices, method of practices to achieve liberation, to achieve enlightenment. And so uh, because obviously being that that sleep is a very important part of our life and a lot of time, and that is a very important part of our life, process of process of you know our life, part of our life. So that these two moments are clearly uh, there is this experience of so-called clear light or experiences of wisdom. That's why it's doorway to that wisdom. And uh, you can think about that in our everyday life, when, they, when there is a moment when you're not moving too much, you're very grounded, there is a moment when you're not thinking too much, there is a not moment that you're not talking, you have not too much voices in your head, you are still silent and spacious, more calm, and those moments, naturally, there is a presence of, of what so-called clear light. So basically what I'm saying is when you're not thinking too much, when you are not uh, stuck in uh, dark and uh, uh, pain feelings, you're more likely having access to that clear light and that wisdom. Same way as you go to sleep, uh, when you have a dream, particularly this so-called samsaric uh, sleep or samsaric dream, uh, the, which means probably 90% of our dreams are uh, samsaric dreams. So basically that means that every dream that you have, it is you have created, uh, it's, it's your past, it's your past thinking, it's past conditioning, past pain, past ideas, pa past wishes, future hope, and so on. It's your own product of your own thoughts. But when you are not thinking as much or when you are not conditioned by those thoughts and you are having these moments where you are uh, not dreaming, uh, not your, your, your feelings, your thoughts are not activated, you're just sleeping but not dreaming. And though that moment of sleep, dreamless sleep moment, basically you are uh, or you, you uh, there's a, how you say, uh, in a way you are in that state of clear light, but not necessarily that you might have access to it, because, you know, um, when it's so clear, it says, it's experience is so clear, it's hard to recognize. Uh, in order to recognize, you always need some, some way of um, defining uh, contrasts, uh, situations to recognize that when you sleep is with no dream, yes, when you pure sleep, it's very hard. But that moment, there is this experience of so-called clear light. So, so, so that sleep being the doorway to the wisdom. That's what it's actually referring to. So, moment you go to sleep, 
what the best way a possible way i'm not saying that you you're trying to follow what i'm trying to explain here and i'm i'm go going to guarantee you that you have experiences of clear that i'm for sure i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is most of the time amount of uh, pain conflict uh, anxieties uh, negative energies and thoughts and feelings that we carry into our sleep and the night not become a restful night night becomes a very exhausting night morning it becomes a very depressing morning not not feeling clarity and fire and drive inspiration why that happened because we we don't just go to sleep properly so definitely uh, it will help oneself to more restful more clear uh, sleep and when you wake up definitely better mood but but there is always this possibility of having experiences of clear light that means uh, uh, when you go to sleep with with a sense of clarity uh, groundedness uh, with focus there's a chance to enter into that clear light and to, there's a chance to enter into that a place unconditional place uh, unconditional uh, qualities um, beyond darkness a presence of clarity clarity and if, if one does goes that what it what one can say that is that entire night or in entire time a moment when you are able to remain connected to that that inner awareness of that space is it's like a basically a purest uh, awareness moment of purest awareness able to stay there for hours is it possible absolutely it's possible but do we try of course most of us we don't try so this is in when you are when you are introduced to the cycle of teaching it, that's a, that is the beautiful that is exciting that um, when you go to sleep the night every single person go to sleep you know no matter how you, you are powerful president you no know, matter you are just you know in the street um, street person homeless person doesn't matter everybody goes to sleep and everybody has that opportunity and those of us who are trying to do our best to engage the practice of sleep and dream yoga is every night we have this opportunity to try and uh, as and 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 of course uh, with the support with the knowledge and if you try uh, you have much 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 more chances because many time i when i teach these things on a weekend or four or five days I know some people would say, I've never had experiences of lucid dream. I never had experiences of even peaceful sleep. And people, people will have kind of complain about that. And then and within a few days, they will they, they're amazed by, you know, they're having first time ever having experiences of lucid dreaming, first time ever having the experiences of able to experience the clear light, uh, able to basically um experience and see and feel and be aware of that light and so so that so this is happening uh, all the time i have witnessed this many many times this is this is in a way uh, i it it it's very i get very encouraged to uh, talk about and teach about this and encourage people to explore because sometimes traditionally people think oh no these are two high practices and and none of you are ready and no one is ready and i don't know if no one is how people can judge to begin with not saying anybody is not ready and so and not even trying to give the possibility opportunity to see if one is ready or not so so i'm trying to be kind of very open to the, to do this now um about the death for example death is another thing that which is you know we think about okay sleep we do go every day sleep how you know not sleep is not important maybe some people even think sleep is wasting a waste of time and and uh, n never see i don't i don't know how many actually people ever see the sleep is the doorway to the wisdom and of course maybe i can in a way i can imagine not to seeing that because 
when I'm conscious, when I have a teachers around me, when I have a mentors, when I have support and practitioners and Sangha, I'm not able to experience the wisdom. How I'm going to have able to experience the wisdom actually when I'm going to be totally exhausted, when I'm going to go to sleep, how it's possible. You might think that way, but you never know. So, so don't give it up, basically what I'm trying to say is don't give it up. So the other situation is the, about the death. In traditionally, uh, a process of dying, we say pardo, the intermediate state, and uh, then number of different stages of the pardo, and then one particular stages of the pardo, and the first, it's called a uh, Vesalji uh, pardo, uh, the intermediate state of clear light. So that is exactly uh, what I'm referring here as the sleep, sleep, or oh, I said the death, sorry, the death is the doorway to wisdom. So that clear light, uh, the intermediate state of clear light is what I'm referring to, so intermediate of state, intermediate state of clear light is the doorway to the wisdom. So, uh, so, so the question is, can any, if anybody can have their experiences, of course anybody can have, have their experiences, but it's not easy to have that experience because you need to, to have enough uh, realization, enough familiarity, enough knowledge, enough experiment throughout the life, throughout the day, uh, that through your sleep. So basically, how many, For imagine in one month, 30, we sleep 30 times, around 30 times. Imagine in 15 times you try to, uh, trying to do the practice. Maybe two times you have the experiences of glimpse of experiences of clear light or some some form of experiences of meditation. And that is a good 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 place to begin. And as you as you do it on a regular basis, and you when you feel some sense of quiet confidence that I I have some ways that I, where I go to sleep, where I hold myself, where I bring my practices in, and where I go to sleep in, where I can actually have the experiences of clear light, actually have some control over my dream, the transformation through the lucid dream. If you feel that kind of um, confidence, and if you feel you are really like able to do, every now and then you're able to do, of course, your chances are, you have, your increases your chance much, 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 much more. But if you don't have ever have uh, until now, then if you happen to die to not today or tomorrow or this month, chances are very, very little. So, so of course, we are not talking about, um, we are, we are, we are, what we are really trying to talk here is, there is this doorway. The process of dying is the doorway. And um, most of the time, uh, we have very negative relation to the death. We think about our death. We think about negatively about death. We think about death is the losing loser, uh, or losing control, uh, has no meaning, it's end of something. Um, kind of a lot of negative, uh, uh, consciously, unconsciously, socially, uh, collectively, individually. Uh, we have negative meanings about the death, but we don't think death is also a one a great possibility uh, for for a yogi to enter into this wisdom and enter into the realization because sometime in the ancient time it is said that uh, a yogi who really have some realization have achieved some realization throughout their life they're kind of in a way waiting for their last moment because if that last moment is is the moment they're going to enter into that uh, awareness, awakening uh, for their final realization. It's like a, a, a subject that you you go to the school and a subject that you choose and you love to study and you have studied very hard and you uh, you are very familiar and you are completely ready to to do a test. And do you wait for the test? Do you look forward to the exam? Yes, of course. You look forward for the exam because you know for sure you're going to pass it. And you know your whole purpose of studying is that there is some, some sense of completion, ending of it, and uh, you, you will achieve that. So, uh, but you will achieve that when the exam is going to happen. So the same way, so higher yogi, for some sense, they are also kind of wait for that moment 
when the moment of pardo, moment of the dissolution happens, they know they kind of prepare themselves to that moment and enter into that clear light. So uh, if you look into all the experiences of uh, all the experiences of the uh, how you say near death experiences, um, near death experiences where many many people talk about the tunnels, tunnels, seeing the tunnels. Many people talk about the seeing the light. Um, and uh, it, in a way, uh, those those tunnels and those lights are, I think, in some way, uh, what we call ex external manifestation of inner light. So it's external manifestation of inner light, uh, which is what what that means is that these lights that they see is kind of connecting to their nature and their essence of their mind. Uh, because it's manifesting from that. Because if, for example, a awakened person sees everything so much luminous, so much awakened, so much lively, so much playful, so much joyful, they see all these qualities in in appearances. And reason why they see all these qualities in appearances is because they are internally internally awakened. Uh, internally, they awaken to that light. That light is reflected out in appearances, in objects, in the matters. So the same way, I think, uh, near that experiences, when people have those experiences, these 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 lights are like the manifestation of their inner awakening. And uh, and I think I when somebody told me that some people who have done doing research about the near death, they said everybody who had near death experiences generally after after their near death experiences they are much 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 more spiritual person uh, as an individual than before they have their experiences of uh, near death because somehow uh, uh, i guess somehow they have been able to be in touch with themselves and they have been able to in touch with that light in themselves so so it's a uh, it's co common experiences. These are uh, mentioned again and again by different people. So so now um, I would like to guide a short meditation and short meditation uh, linked both with uh, uh, sleep and uh, maybe 10, 10, 10 15 minute uh, session with the sleep and 10, 15 minute session with the process of dying and uh, i know like sometime when i talk about the death and people really don't like like the idea of talking too much about it and not not they don't liking the idea about even dying even meditation of the death and if, if some of you feel that way and that's also i think is a very good to as i guide the meditation if you feel that way um it's a good place to watch basically right so if you are totally ignoring it if you're totally ignoring it you are say, oh death no i don't want i'm not interested i'm not going to even think about it then you watch yourself you just did it you just did something very specific why you did what you did you probably you have more to learn from them than other people who did not do that or you you're feeling a resistance to, to do that do that then and then you probably have more things to learn from the process of dying than other people who didn't do that so I'm encouraging those you have, those you might have these experiences. You have extra awareness, self-reflection do during this meditation. Uh, other than that, um, I hope this these two session of little meditation will give some glimpse of a possibility, and uh, then you can, of course, we have this opportunity to, especially case of sleep opportunity to uh, practice uh, continuously a lot and uh, and um, there is uh, uh, on my facebook page uh, which is tenzin wangyal rumboche uh, there is a um, when i was in hungary budapest uh, when i was teaching there on sleep yoga uh, we did a uh, little bit live recording of the sleep yoga teaching and i think there are certain exercises there in that particular uh, life 
webcast which is recorded on my Facebook page you can probably if you look at there you will see it if you're interested a little bit more to understand about the sleep yoga and what this uh, doorway to the wisdom or clarity means uh, I would uh, encourage to watch that so I'll give you a little bit more information so now sit comfortably So take it seven times deep breathing. Breathe in deep, breathe out deep. And those you know the nine breathing of purification, you can do that. Those you don't know uh, nine breathing of purification, just deep, take seven deep breathing. Use the breath, uh, exhalation to just release all the tensions. Uh, all the discomfort and tensions that you are feeling this very moment in your body, in your breath, in your mind. Just clear it out. Now imagine that it's the evening, your regular uh, bedtime, and you're trying to go to sleep. Even though you're not lying down, imagine you're lying down regularly, you're trying to go to go to sleep. You're trying to bring your full attention inward towards your body so the mind and the body is fully connected. Body is very still, mind is aware of that very stillness and feeling grounded, supported by the body. Be aware of the silence of your speech. Feel the silence. Connect with that silence. Rest in that silence. There is a deep sense of peace. Allow fully rest in that silence, in that peace. But be aware and connected to the silence.
Be aware of spaciousness, openness of your mind and your heart. Connected. Sense of warmth. Warmth of being. Now your body is fully rested in that stillness. Speech is fully rested in that silence. Mind is fully rested in that spaciousness of mind. Bring your attention to your breath. As you're breathing out, imagine from your heart, the luminous light comes through your nostril because you are spacious, you are silence, you are still, you are aware, connected. From that experience, the light comes through your nostril, comes out into the world, into your world, touches the objects, people, that you're familiar, and those who are kind of stuck in your mind, kind of connected, unwanted connections, that you are connected, the kind of heaviness, just dissolve, bring the light and touch, touch those people and those people dissolve into the light. The matter dissolves into the light and the light helps dissolve your subject, your mind, heaviness of your own mind duality, ego. So breathing out, dissolving objects of ego, and breathing in the light, dissolving the ego itself. Every cycle of breath is dissolving objects of ego and a subject ego continuously. In every cycle of breath, you're becoming a lighter and lighter and lighter and more and more luminous. And gradually allow yourself fully to sleep, rest in that luminosity, in that light, only light, no matters, no subjects. No objects, no subjects. Only clear light. Allow to fall asleep. But be aware of the connection. Be aware of the connection to that boundless space, pure and infinite awareness. That is the wisdom. You are entering right, right into that wisdom through the means of sleep. Be aware, allow to go to sleep.
and feel so you are supported by me, by all the Cyber Sangha who are participating right now, this moment, and of course, any other support that you feel in your life, just you know you are, you have, you are supported. Okay. Now, the second part of the practice, just for briefly, let's try briefly and um, just imagine that the moment of one's own death. Losing our connection, relation to the outer world, concrete worlds, retrieving inward, even families friends, even the really close families, like your partner, husband, wife, child, close friends, You're kind of departing from all and internally the dissolutions of the elements are in your own body from earth, water, fire, air, space. You're a spleen to kidney liver to lung to heart the organs are also weakening dissolving functioning less so your relation to the outer world the material world in your own body is weakening slowly but your relation to the inner world the door is opening, the chances are greater. Matter obscures the light, matter is dissolving, light is illuminating more. But remain internally connected to that sacred space the pure awareness and the warmth. And then allow, let your body and the matter go. Just go deeper, 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 deeper. 
but become more and more and more familiar to that awareness, to that light, as you become less and less and less familiar with the outer dualistic world, material world, your own body, sensations, feelings of your own body, but the other subtler awareness is becoming a more clear. Just trying to see, trying to feel, or trying to even imagine if you're not feeling or experiencing at all. Okay, so we are uh, we have a little time, and so uh, I'm going to just kind of wrap up a little bit what we were doing here, and then uh, uh, those of you who wanted to ask some questions, you are welcome to prepare yourself for the next uh, few questions. I will take a few questions. Um, so, so what we just did, and uh, we're going to. Uh, add these two short sessions or practices separately and uh, added it uh, separately so that if those of you wanted to use this, uh, particularly like the sleeping part, you can uh, probably able to download on your phone and listen to it before you go to sleep. So you have just basically go to sleep with this little short guided practice. Um, so we hope you can uh, do that. So now, um, this is not something normally we think about, you know, the sleep being the door to the wisdom or the process of dying is being really like a door to the wisdom. But according to these ancient tradition, they are clearly, uh, clearly door to the wisdom. They are, they are in a way, they are more. Uh, important door to the wisdom than our waking state. For example, uh, in our waking state, um, there is so much uh, stimulations. There is so much um, sense experiences. There is so much feelings and thoughts and emotions. There is so much interactions. And, uh, and when you have so much of these inter interactions, it is very difficult to experience the stillness and silence and spaciousness. We know that. And so, but as, you know, from Monday till Friday, probably, it's very difficult to have that experience. Maybe during the weekend, it's easier to have experience. Maybe during the, even the evening when you're tired, when you're trying to go to sleep, maybe there's a possibility it's easier to have experience access to the experience but but there is this possibility that uh, as you go to sleep uh, the door basically opens more as you go to sleep so a question about uh, knowing that using that and trying to apply that as much as possible so every single night there is this possibility sleep being the doorway so so i think basically it's, it's important to remember something that we never think about it, something that we go every night, go to sleep. There is this possibility that if one um, able to maintain genuinely more open just first five, ten minutes before you go to sleep, there is a much, much more greater chance to, to awaken, greater chance to connect with yourself, greater chance to heal, greater chance to rest. There's an infinite possibility there. So uh, I would, my encouragement to all of you is to not uh, ignore it. You're the door to the sleep, don't ignore it. And then 
of course, to the process of the death and dying, as I said earlier, and this is also um, something very important and something that if we feel some kind of resistant rejection to it, then pay special attention. Those people should pay special attention to that, why I'm doing that. And, the, and so those you are feeling some, some sense of feeling more closer to the death, more a closer relation to the idea of dying or death, or you reflect, you think, you maybe think it's, uh, it's close or something, then you also definitely have um, more chance to pay more closer attention to this. So, so that's all I think um, as far as uh, this session is concerned. So I will uh, open up for a few, few questions. And so, um, yeah. So we have 826 on Facebook and the webinar in 27 countries. Okay. So uh, Scott is helping me here and Scott just said we had what? 826. 826 computers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so happy to see, I think at this session, uh, this particular one seems like we have a lot of more attended people. Uh, it, it, it's, this, this is not the people, but uh, it's a computer. So that, that means uh, there are a lot of people are listening uh, from different places. And uh, particularly, I would uh, encourage our Sangha members to from different places, so those you are listening as a group and uh, um, love to see um, some of the pictures, okay? Yeah. So there's a question from Raphael. What are the signs that the sleep practice is working? So what are the signs? So the question is, um, what other signs are there that sleep practice is working? So I think the most important one is that if, uh, if you are able to uh, be lucid, if you are able to um, experience, um, for example, there are the many people, many people say something like this. They would say during, during the teachings that I do and people, and I know my, my own experiences with all that also, that uh, when you are doing the practice, uh, when you're practicing or and when you're not practicing, when you're not practicing, what happened is, you know, you go like, you're so tired and exhausted, you hit your head to the pillow, you're, boom, you're gone. So that really like, a, there is no, five, 10 minutes, you have no clarity, no awareness, nothing. But when you have not too tired, when you don't have a jet lag, when you have enough time for preparing yourself to go to sleep, then you feel the time is different. You know, like it's kind of time becomes much longer. You f you feel the moment you intend to fall asleep, you fall asleep, if there's, there is a process that you are aware of. But process is not effortful, painful, exhausting, but very open, luminous, um, restful awareness is there. And at some point, you realize an incredible amount of time that you, you are there, you don't know. And at some point, you even think, I'm not sure I'm sleeping. Am I asleep? Am I awake? Not really clearly being aware, but then feeling completely rested. And sometimes people feeling that they are like a, being a little bit detached from their body. Like people talk about the death experience, they are kind of looking at their body or looking at their experiences of going to sleep or something like that. I think some of those are, I would say, I would not say necessarily it's like a, a sign of clear light, but definitely a sign of more space and more dimension of awareness of consciousness. It might be very pure, very high one. It might be more ordinary consciousness, it, being aware of the event, but at least you are not dead snoring. There's something that you're conscious of. I think that's good enough. Yeah. Um, Walter, why is so much joy felt during the death exercise? <laughs> so the question is why so much uh, joy, um, Walter felt so much joy during the exercise of the death. Uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe uh, uh, possible that um, that all the negative 
projections that you have toward the death and fears that you have death or sadness that you have the death in this particular moment, they all are uplifted for you. So maybe you realize all that what I thought was not true is just a pure joy. In pure presence, not elaborating with your fear and not producing pain, there is simply a pure joy of presence. Probably that's what happened. Okay. From Agniska, I feel scared during the part of meditation regarding death. What can I do about it? Okay, so then the next question is I felt a little bit scared about during the, during the practice of the death. So that's exactly, you know, um, good, good question. So there was kind of the opposite uh, the of the first the question first the previous one that feeling a lot of joy and then you're feeling saying you're feeling uncomfortable and sadness so so obviously uh, one's relation to the death is something not necessarily pleasant uh, a little scary uh, uncomfortable that we all have so just basically um, not running away from that um, being being present with that and um, not elaborating more with your fear and thoughts, uh, just st kind of hosting that in that pure space and awareness and warmth. And then uh, gradually you feel more um, a sense of uh, uh, less discomfort, less painful, and then maybe a little bit more uh, quite okay, then maybe a little bit more quite comfortable, then maybe more you will feel what Walter feel, felt Oh, it's just such a joy, you know, no, there's no problem at all. So these are in sequence, probably these experiences are possible to happen. So one last question. Um, Birel, I'm curious if there is a mantra that goes particularly well with this practice. So the question about there is particular mantras that goes with these practices. There are many mantras goes within many practices. There are practice goes. So this is not uh, particularly uh, the moment that I feel uh, time to talk about this. So I think uh, yes, the answer is simply yes, there is. And uh, so I, this is how we're going to end today. So I hope this was uh, meaningful for all of you. And, uh, and those you wanted to remember what we said, or remember the practice, so then you can go on ligmeter learning um, dot com and and the ocean of wisdom. Uh, the, then you will see the, these recorded uh, videos will be there, and probably I'm not sure if it's working or not. It's prob probably still working in my Facebook. Um, it's a uh, it's on there, so I will. If I will not press the wrong button, I will ask to record it, and then it will be also available on my Facebook, Tenzi Wang Jarbuche. So you can also visit there. Uh, recorded will be available as it is, as as we recorded here. Okay. So thank you very much. We are going to do our dedication.
Thank you, all the web class, internet, and also thank you for the, all the Facebook people, Facebook friends.